A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Hello everybody and welcome to uh, what is probably the last video of 2020 for me. Uh, I've not checked the calendar, but I imagine that's the case. Thank you so much for watching the videos this year. It's been the silver lining and what has otherwise been a pants year, to be honest. Uh, now my wish list for next year includes many things such as being able to go to the pub, uh, been able to travel, been able to see friends, all that kind of stuff, which is all much more exciting than the kind of thing that I'm going to talk about today. But since this is a photography channel, I thought I'd talk about the photography gear that I'm hoping gets invented next year. None of which I'm sure about, to be honest. I, I hope it all does, but uh, yeah, I've got no idea. I thought I'd talk about it anyway. So starting with cameras, that's a pretty decent place to start, isn't it? Now, I've only just got hold of my S5 really, so I'm not looking to do uh, anything too dramatic really with my uh, camera setup next year. What I am looking to do is maybe uh, grow the distance between my Micro Four Thirds gear and my full frame gear in terms of weight and size. So the S5 and my full frame setup, I'm gonna be using that when I've got no weight concerns, like when I'm shooting a lot from the car, basically. Uh, whereas my Micro Four Thirds gear, I'll be using a lot when I've got no uh, low light concerns and when I wanna keep things nice and light. Uh, now this is my G9 that I've been using for the last three years, as you'll know if you've watched lots of this channel. And I love it, but it's quite a big body for a Micro Four Thirds camera. And what I'd like to do is get a body that more sort of mirrors lenses like this a bit more. So I'd like to be able to pair these tiny little primes with a tiny Micro Four Thirds body. So what I'm hoping happens next year is that Lumix brings out like a, a GX10 type camera, like a rangefinder looking camera that uh, basically has got all the features of a G9, but just a, a smaller body. In fact, even better than that would be if they bought out like a GM1 replacement. You know, that tiny, tiny little one that they had a few years ago. I would love that because it would go perfectly with, with little lenses like this. And that would be a perfect setup for things like bike packing or multi-day hikes, uh, camping, all that kind of stuff. Maybe not camping actually because, um, well, low light. But yeah, a little camera like that would be perfect. If one doesn't materialize in the first few months of the year, I might just buy like a GM1 or a, a GX9, 8, whichever the last one is, 9. Yeah, I might buy something like that. I used to have an Olympus EM5, which I loved. I had that back in 2012, 2013, whenever the original one was released. I loved that, so I would look at those as well, but being a Lumix ambassador and loving the way Lumix cameras are set up, I'd probably look at the, the Lumix ones first. So that is probably all I'll do in terms of cameras for 2021, unless something gets released that is just mind blowing and then I might do something else. Who can predict the future? Actually, if anyone can, I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to them and find out whether next year will definitely be better than this year. Fingers crossed. Uh, on the subject of cameras, actually, let me have a bit of a whinge about this. This is my Sony ZV-1, which I got a few weeks ago. It's a great little camera. The autofocus on it is very, very impressive, but the box that it came with came in this, this little cardboard thing that quite clearly says made for vlogging. And uh, I would argue that this camera is not made for vlogging at all. And that's primarily because of the lens. It's a 24 to 70, or it's marketed as a 24 to 70 lens, I think. That might be wrong. I'm sure I've read somewhere that it's marketed as a 24 to 70. I actually think it's a bit tighter. I think it's about 26 to 70. And when you turn the active stabilization on, it goes to like a 30 mil to 70, two. 70 something and that is just nowhere near wide enough to do any vlogging so if you hold the camera at arm's length like so all you see is my face which i appreciate at the best of times you don't want to do you want to see the mountains and stuff in the background it's just way too tight and also because the stabilization isn't the best it means that shooting at a focal length that isn't wide enough to start with just exacerbates the um the flaws in the stabilization so if sony was to bring out a camera like this with a much wider lens I would probably be their first customer because it's a fantastic little package for doing vlog bits, particularly with the amazing autofocus. It's just that the lens is just not wide enough. And actually, if they changed the lens and didn't make any changes to the stabilization, then the stabilization would probably be all right because, um, well, if you've got a wider lens, you don't notice the, uh, the stabilization issues quite as much. So yeah, fingers crossed that Sony fixes that and does actually make a camera that's 
that's good for vlogging. Basically, what I'm after is the field of view of a GoPro, but with a, a better sensor than what the GoPro has. And the GoPro doesn't have the ability to uh, add a mic either, unless you buy the, the media mod, which just seems like a bit of a rip off, to be honest. So having a GoPro that you could add a mic to, and maybe with a slightly bigger sensor would be awesome as well. I'd, I'd really like that. But for the most part, what these cameras do is, is pretty incredible. Uh, this is a GoPro 8, Hero 8. Uh, I think there's a 9 now. I don't plan on getting a 10 if one does come out next year, unless it does have the, the ability to, to add a mic to it and a bigger sensor. Uh, what else? Drone. So this drone is a Mavic Pro 2, and I have a love-hate relationship with this, I'd say. I really like the output, particularly the stills. I think what it can do is incredible. However, it weighs a bit too much for my liking, and uh, I'd like DJI to come out with one that's smaller, but has the same output, uh, basically the same sensor, the same camera. That would be awesome. I mean, typically what I do with this at the moment is when I take it out with me, I'll hope that I'm parked somewhere that I can get decent drone footage from. So I'll just fly the drone first thing before I even set foot out from the car and uh, then I'll just leave it in the car for the day because I've got my sort of drone B-roll and a couple of photos maybe. Um, and that really isn't the purpose of the drone. I'd prefer to be taking it with me all the time, but I don't know, when I take my bike out and stuff like I did the other day, I don't want this in my bag as well as full frame lenses or even micro four thirds set up. It just gets too heavy when you've got a load of water and food and layers and stuff with you as well. So, so yeah, if they could bring out like a, a Mavic Air size drone that had the output of this drone, that'd be incredible. And I appreciate if they were to do that, then they'd probably be bringing out a drone of this size with an even better camera. But to be honest, the output from this is perfectly fine for my uses and uh, I'd be happy to sacrifice not upgrading the image quality to upgrade the usability of the drone, is what I'd say. So fingers crossed 2021 brings that from DJI or any other company that wants to step into the drone market. But good luck, DJI seems to have a, a pretty good foothold. Uh, these are the microphones that I use for most of my vlogs outdoors, incredible little things. Rode Wireless Go, I think they're called. Basically, this one goes on the camera, this one goes on your person. They talk to each other, and basically you don't have to sync the audio uh, in the files afterwards. It's basically just in the, uh, the video file, which is awesome. Now, the mic that I'm using now to record this is a Rode Video Pro Plus shotgun mic. I can't remember what it's called, to be honest, but basically it's got this feature whereby when you turn the camera off that it's connected to, it'll turn the microphone off as well, which means it saves battery, essentially. I would love that feature on these, because otherwise you have to either keep them on all day, so they eventually just drain out and you run out of battery, or you have to always remember to turn these off when you turn your camera off. So you have to turn off three buttons rather than one every time you turn the camera off, which doesn't sound like hard work, but when this is tucked away in your coat pocket and this is on top of the camera, Sometimes you just forget and it's a bit of a pain and then you start recording the next clip and there's no sound on it because you've forgotten to turn one of these on. So that would be amazing if these turned on and off automatically with the camera. I'd like that a lot. Uh, lenses I've spoken about. So this is the 20 to 60 that came with my S5. It's the kit lens, fantastic lens, uh, plenty sharp enough for my uses. However, it's not the fastest. So as I've said in a previous video, I'm gonna replace this with a 24 millimeter 1.8 and a 50 millimeter 1.8 when they're released by Lumix, hopefully in the first few months of next year. I should say being an ambassador of Lumix, I have no idea when they're gonna be released or if and when a GX model, a new GX model is gonna be released either. I'm hopeful that both of those things will happen, but uh, who knows? Um, camera bag, I'm perfectly happy with my camera bag at the moment, which is in the bath, the F-stop Lotus. It might be dry now, I, uh, I had to give it a bath after I took it mountain biking the other day. Fantastic bag this, I've got no complaints about it whatsoever. I love it and uh, I won't be replacing this unless it breaks, which I don't think it will because the build quality looks to be fantastic. Uh, there's a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up, as is the case for all the other stuff that I've spoken about, I think. And uh, yeah, I won't need to replace that. What I am looking to do though, is get to understand, didn't give it a good enough bath. Uh, what I am looking to do is work out how to best carry camera equipment on my bike. Now I have spoken about this a little bit before. Um, lots of people have commented on the videos where I've spoken about it previously before, which has been very helpful. I've got these bike packing bags. So this one 
is uh, a saddlebag and it's like 17 litres or something from Apidura which is massive and it's going to be fantastic for putting like a tent in and all my camping bits and stuff. I've also got a handlebar bag which again is going to be fantastic. I think this again is maybe 20 litres or something so plenty of room to put lots of things in but I'm unsure whether either of those things can house my camera equipment because if I've got like a gravel bike or the bike that I've got now, the mountain bike, typically I'm going to be going on uneven terrain and the vibrations from that is just not good for cameras at all. So the best place typically for camera gear is uh, on your back because your body can act as stabilization and um, well yeah, stops your cameras rattling around too much. However, I'm intrigued to hear about how you've got on uh, on gravel roads or mountain biking putting your camera equipment on the bike as opposed to on your person. Has it just shaken its shreds or um, has your gear survived? Because typically I think it would be better to have all the stuff on the bike as opposed to on your shoulders because well backpacks are just annoying and get sweaty in summer and yeah I'd prefer not to have a backpack while I'm mountain biking and stuff so let me know how you've got on with that. And finally, a product that I know is out that I haven't tested or tried yet but I'm interested in your opinion on the Peak Design Travel Tripod, the carbon one. Have any of you got it? What do you think? Do you think it's worth the money? Because basically the tripod that I've got, the three-legged thing, I really, really like it, but it's a bit heavy and a bit cumbersome and it's a bit big, I think, to uh, stick on a bike. So that's the other thing I was gonna ask. Have any of you got any experience sticking a tripod onto a bike in some way so that, again, you don't have to carry it on your back? Um, and yeah, in particular, I'd like to hear about the, the Peak Design Travel tripod thing because that does look like quite a clever design it packs down really small and uh, it's actually quite light as well and I really like the the peak design stuff that I've I've had in the past I don't know why I've got this little pouch from them I don't know what came in that but um, yeah generally I do like peak design stuff so let me know if you think that was worthwhile spending and yes obviously it pains me to spend money on tripods I hate tripods but they're a necessity for video so um, yeah it'd be good to find a tripod that I can carry around that doesn't completely do my head in. Uh, so yeah, that concludes the, the list of gear that I'm excited for next year. None of which might materialize, but uh, fingers crossed. I'm excited to hear what you are looking forward to in terms of gear next year as well. And uh, hopefully you've thought of some more interesting stuff than me and I'll be able to uh, steal it. I mean, I'll buy it if it comes out obviously, but I just mean steal the idea of buying it. Yeah. But anyway, thank you for watching and a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So Squarespace makes building websites incredibly easy for people like me who haven't got the time or the inclination to learn how to do it myself. Basically, you pick a template from loads of options and then you tweak that template to get a website that you absolutely love the look of. I've used mine for years, I love it, it's integral to my business and I wouldn't trust anyone else with my website needs other than Squarespace. So if you fancy trying it out yourself, then go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And after that, if you want to make a purchase, then go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off that purchase. So a huge thank you to Squarespace for their support and a huge thank you to you for watching this and all the other videos that I've made this year. I really, really appreciate it and I can't wait to start making videos next year as well. Hopefully more of them outside, as I've said in pretty much every video recently, but uh, it's just been raining constantly. So fingers crossed that comes to an end soon. And fingers crossed all that gear gets invented too.